Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Gingerella. So just yesterday I was tagged by Holly of Holly Sews with the seamstress tag. So I thought it was an excellent idea and I'm getting involved straight away. Before I start, very quickly show you what I'm wearing. Um, this is a By Hand Under Flora dress. So it's the, the little pinafore apron version um, in a sort of stretch suiting type fabric, navy. Okay, let's get started. My name's Jen, or Gingerella. Some of my usernames are Gingerella J. I'm 31 years old. I live in Bristol, and I've lived here for about four years. I used to live in Manchester for 10 years, which is where I went to university, and I studied physics. I'm originally from near Birmingham, a little place called Walsall. You might have heard of Wolverhampton, so it's very close to there as well. By day, I am a scientific editor. I look at scientific research all day, every day. When I first moved to Bristol, I was looking for a hobby. In Manchester, I'd been in choirs, and things like that so I had a look for a choir to join. I joined one, wasn't meeting my expectations so I was looking for another hobby. One of my friends at work who I'd started living with had been doing sewing and dressmaking for a few years at that point and she suggested that I might want to do a sewing for beginners class. Now when she first suggested it I sort of figuratively screwed up my nose because I didn't think I was very crafty or creative at all. I really didn't think it would be for me. Both my mum and my nan had sewn for years um, and my sister had crocheted and so on and I just it just hadn't caught my attention really. So this was back in January 2014 so it's nearly three years ago now. Within two weeks I was addicted and had bought a sewing machine which is the one that I still have. So probably my Sewaholic Minoru or Minoru jacket um, just because it, it was it's a jacket I mean it's a coat it's pretty uh, I thought it was beyond me at the time I made it Hmm, about six months ago maybe, nine months ago. I just love it and I wear it all the time. This is really hard actually because I don't think I've had anything super disastrous. I think probably there's something so disastrous I'm just erasing it from my mind basically. Maybe I'll come back to that one. I've just thought one of my sewing disasters is actually a pair of Sew Over It Ultimate trousers. This isn't necessarily Sew Over It's fault. Um, it's a number of different things, many of which are my fault. Um, the fabric I chose wasn't great, so it just, it kind of stretches, but it also doesn't, not in the right way. The directional stretch is weird. Um, <clears throat> I was completely overzealous with cutting and I cut out this, the paper pattern in a size 10 without checking any fitting or anything so they don't really fit properly. Um, they're baggy in some places and too tight in others. Um, I don't really like that there's no waistband. There's a facing but there's not a separate waistband. I know that Lisa Comfort does have a post on her blog about how to draft your own but I didn't I don't know if it existed at that time or potentially I just couldn't be bothered I don't really wear these they're a weird sort of length as well I don't know why I haven't given them away because they might fit someone that is definitely a sewing disaster so when I first started it used to be fabric land just because the choice and the price was very attractive for a beginner who didn't want to spend a lot of money um, and was also drawn by all the fancy fabrics. But actually my favourite place is both an online and a physical store, Sewn Bristol. It's just around the corner from where I work. It's so handy and there are some really great choices 
in terms of fabrics and Marie who runs it stocks some really great patterns and fabrics um, the choice is brilliant My most used pattern is a tie between Soaholic Belcara blouse and By Hand London Flora because I've made three of each. They're probably pretty representative of the kind of things I like to sew, or at least they were a little while ago. There's a few other things I've sewn recently which I think I could see myself making a few more times, so maybe something else will overtake it. Hmm, I struggle to decide on this one because it's either hemming or buttonholes. I don't think it's hemming because actually that's not that bad once I sit down and get into it because it's quite relaxing. But buttonholes I really don't enjoy. I know it's because my machine doesn't handle it very well. I don't know why because it used to. Maybe I'm a workwoman blaming her tools. That's the bit I dread the most, which is why I've started using snaps in pretty much everything that I can, so yeah, buttonholes. Hmm, that's a very good question. I really enjoy overlocking actually, especially when you get the overlocking just right, so you know it's not all wobbly and hanging over the edge and everything. Yeah, I really enjoy overlocking. Also, especially when you have a nice, fun, coloured overlock thread um, to make it a bit more interesting on the inside. But it's also a bit scary, which makes it exhilarating in a sewing sort of way. Well, I'm going to state the obvious, but sewing vlogs. I love sewing vlogs. I don't watch them while I'm sewing really because I like to be able to pay attention and I can't really do that when I'm sewing. When I'm sewing I listen to podcasts, I've got a few different podcasts that I listen to. In terms of sewing ones there's the Seamwork Radio podcast that I listen to. I don't actually listen to any other sewing ones, I know there are a lot and the fold line have a really good list of different ones that you can listen to. I do have to plug headphones in so that I can hear but I've got some great noise cancelling headphones that I pop on. Hmm, I'm probably smack bang in the middle on this one. I like the the instant nature of a PDF pattern and actually you can really automate the way that you cut the PDF pieces and stick them together so that you're not really having to think about it so that's quite good and if you've got a guillotine as well that's that's quite handy. But I do really like a printed pattern as well, especially if it's really nice packaging. Half and half, I'm afraid. I know I should choose, but I can't. So I have a Janome J324. Let me bring it out. Um, and as I say, I've had this for nearly three years now. Um, it, do, it does all the things that you need it to do, really. It, do, it isn't computerised. Um, so it doesn't have, you know, a start and a stop or a speed control. But other than that, it has everything else, um, all of the different stitch types, um, and you can alter the length and the width. The width is really good for being able to move the needle position around. But I am looking to upgrade at the moment, and I've been doing a little bit of research. Initially, I was considering Janome. DKS30 or DKS100, which is the one that you probably would have seen on Tilly's blog. But I'm now somewhere between one of those or a FAF Passport 2.0, I think it is, or there's a Benina one that I'm looking at as well. So if anyone has any recommendations or thoughts, I'd really appreciate it in terms of upgrading from a beginner sewing machine to an intermediate sewing machine. Before I used to sew, I was very much into baking and I used to do a lot of baking for other people, including some themed cakes and things like that. I actually once made an Angry Birds themed cake for my brother for his 25th birthday and I also entered a competition at work and I made an ombre cake, which actually meant I won, so 
that was pretty cool. I realised I was just eating the cakes all the time. That's not a good hobby. But other than that, this is my hobby, basically. I'm going to go ahead and also nominate some people. So I'm going to nominate Ellie M. I'm not going to have a go at your surname because I know I will butcher it. And I'm also going to nominate Lisa Emerita. So yes, you two should get involved. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.